take the time. It's the start of Becca's Bookopolathon, which is a 48 hour readathon happening this weekend based around Becca's Bookopoly. The readathon is based around roll drops, and I am so excited that this has finally started because I've been putting off one of my most anticipated reads for this readathon. Granted, only for a couple of days, but I have been putting it off <laughs> because we do already know what the first two rolls are, but I thought we'd go over them anyway. So we have the first one. Roll number one. Nine. A paranormal or magical realism. Or we have the second board. 2020 board, roll number one. Seven. Which is a chance card. And my chance card is going to be Leviathan Wakes by James S. A. Corey. Lol. So with the rules of this readathon saying that you can bend the prompt slightly, I am going for the first role, which is a paranormal or magical realism slash fabulism. I will finally be reading The Dawn Chorus by Samantha Shannon, which is a bone season novella that came out on Thursday, and I wanted to read on Thursday the second it came out, but I've held off because I knew it would fit this prompt, and so this is only 100 pages long or 130 something pages long. Excitement is unreal. Unreal. People have been asking me if I've read it because apparently it's amazing and I just want to know, I want to know! I'm so happy to have more bone season content, so... Oh. This is the only book I've been able to even vaguely plan for the readathon because the point is that you can't make TBR. However, I am also 70 pages into The Long Way to Small Angry Planet, so if this can fit any of the prompts, I'm hoping I can squish this into the weekend somewhere. <laughs> that being said, it is a little bit after 12 now and Becca is doing a reading sprint from a quarter past until the hour, so I'm going to take part in that to get kick-started. And so let the readathon begin! <laughs> over 30% through the Dawn Chorus and it hurts. It hurts so much. <laughs> I have nearly sobbed reading this because this is one of my favourite characters going through the worst time and oh I love it because of how it confronts things like PTSD. It, it confronts so much like all of the trigger warnings just for this one novella and just for the entire series really. I will put the trigger warnings for this in the description box but it's so hard to read but it needs to be and I'm genuinely so glad that this novella exists already just because this part is usually skipped in so many books. So many fantasy books and sci-fi and dystopian. So many fantasy books just completely skip over the part where people are recovering after they've gone through this really traumatic thing or just don't really acknowledge how that might have altered their brain a little bit. And that's exactly what this novella does and it does more things as well like we're jumping back and forth in time so she's flitting between her memories, a place before all this and then coming back to what's happening right now. So we are seeing more than just her literal trauma but all of it is just I don't even know if I could have words for it like it, I have had many many years with these characters and I can't deal with them being hurt which is not proving good for me because we've got another four books in this series coming out yet and I imagine things are gonna get worse but then at the same time we are seeing quite witty banter between the two main characters it's really amusing to read that alongside all of the really awful stuff so uh this is why Samantha Shannon is my favorite author I just <laughs> So it's just before midday on Saturday and I finished reading The Dawn Chorus. This book broke my heart and also restored a piece of my soul at the same time. Everything hurts, I almost cried three times, but it's just so good. Like I cannot fathom how much was put into those 90 pages. Like it was just everything I would want from the aftermath of a traumatic event in a fantasy book. Like it's so hard to read because I've been with these characters for so long and it's just it's honestly devastating seeing it all but also I want to see it because it's just realistic and you don't get that too often. But it was also evened out with more lighthearted moments or heartwarming moments at least which really did get the balance between something being so completely heart-wrenching versus having that hope still there and just going through so much darkness 
but still seeing moments that remind you why all of this is happening and it's just oh, it was so good <laughs> so i rated this five stars is anybody surprised probably not and i managed to finish it with enough time to spare before the next roll drop which will be happening in just a few minutes so let's find out what my next book will be okay i'm back it's 12 time for the roll drops <laughs> 2019 board roll number two six a book that is culturally diverse mm, okay okay board number two 2020 board roll number two three viewer recommends 2020 board huh i don't know which to go for <laughs> I know I have quite a few that could fit for culturally diverse. I feel like half of this time is just going to be me trying to decide what books to read. <laughs> I do have The Sorcerer of the Wild Deeds by Kaya Shanti Wilson. Possibly Binti by Nadia Korofor. Oh, I have too many options. <laughs> oh no. Because I could also use The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet as viewer recommends because I did have many, many viewers recommend me that book. Okay, so I have decided I'm going to listen to Binti by Nnedi Okorafor because that is on script. And I know specifically that this is a African inspired sci-fi, specifically inspired by Namibia. So I'm going to listen to that one. I've been meaning to listen to it for the longest time. And I decided to go for an audiobook because I do have a couple of things to do, like create thumbnails. So I can do that while listening. And then because I'm guessing I will finish it long before the next roll drop comes, I'm going to read The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet for viewer recommend. So we're currently delving into a lot of sci-fi. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> So I'm listening to Binti and I don't know how far in I am but I just keep laughing because she's literally trolling this alien thing because she's in a room and they want her to come out of the room so they're literally just on the other side of the door yelling at her to come out and she's just like no. I don't know why I find it so amusing but I do. So I finished Binti and I rated it four stars. I feel like I don't really have too much to say like I'm still trying to process it a little bit but it was really enjoyable and I was immediately on the side of the main character because she had this kind of academic ambition but also a wavering questioning surrounding how she was going against the norm of her culture and how to kind of deal with that. She was entering a lot of spaces which were completely new to her and you do see that questioning but then you do also see the determination in which she knows what she wants and she knows that she's going to get it. So I was just entirely on her side because I'm like, yes girl, you go do what you want. And I don't know, it was just really nice to see her go through this. I think I just liked it because of the academic side of things, like even though I cannot relate because it was all about mathematics, I just really like kind of university setup and somebody who actually cares about their education. Like I just, <sighs> it gets me every time. <laughs> But then as well we do have the plot line where there's this kind of possible war on the horizon because of stolen heritage and that was really interesting too because when it comes to museums and stuff there's a lot of conversations about how things that are stored in museums can be problematic especially in terms of how they were acquired and it's just something that I've never really seen especially in a sci-fi book not that I've read too much sci-fi but yeah I really enjoyed it so that is that now done I'm now two books into the readathon right now I am actually about to pause the readathon for a bit because I need to do the work needed for my summer course. So that should be a couple of hours or so and then I will get back on it with The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. Let me be
the midnight look, we're rolling with it. <laughs> so it's just gone past midnight, meaning we are halfway through the readathon, and so far I've read The Dawn Chorus, Binti, and I think 70 pages of A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, which isn't too much in terms of page count. I definitely could have read more in terms of this being a readathon, but I'm not too sad about that because I have been doing other stuff throughout today, and I also have mainly just been wanting to get back into a habit of reading around 100 pages a day because that used to be my standard, it used to be my average. And quite a while ago, I completely fell out of that habit. At first it was because I was just reading less per day, but then it started turning into this weird thing where I would read 300 or 400 pages in one day and then nothing for the next three or four days. So it was almost as if I would binge read everything in one day and then just not read anything because I'd already used up all of that energy. So I have very much been wanting to get back into a 100 page average per day. So I'm very happy that I've been managing that lately and today I've done even more than that so I'm content. But speaking of The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, I am now 140-ish pages into this and I honestly feel like I don't have that much to say because even though we are 140 pages in, this is still very much in the character building side of things because the main plot of this where they set out on this journey to do this dangerous task of sorts hasn't happened yet, like it's been suggested and they're preparing to set off but they haven't actually gone anywhere yet so we're still very much in the character development side of things and the world building but I do feel like I don't have too much to say because of that because I'm still just learning things at the minute. It is proven interesting, I especially like reading about Orhan. That character and their entire species is just a really interesting concept. I've actually just read the chapter called The Wayne. If you've read this book you'll know what that is and it's just really interesting seeing how they work. I don't know, I kind of have that about each of the different species in this book but other than that, I honestly don't have too much more to say. I can't say I'm loving it. I am really hoping I will have that moment where I realise that I've completely fallen in love with the story without even noticing because this book does feel like it has the potential to have that moment and I really want to love it because so many people love it but I don't know. We shall see. We shall see. <laughs> that being said, it has gone past midnight so we have another roll drop to do. 2019 board roll number three. Three. A mystery or a thriller. Oh, not a fan of that one. 2020 board roll number three. Ten. A book you've been gifted. 2020 board roll number three. That one I can work with. Okay, that prompt was my saviour there. So I'm going to go for the second one, which is a book that you've been gifted. I don't have a book that instantly sprang to mind, but I just know I do not want to read a mystery or a thriller. So saying that though, I do have a thriller on the go at the minute. I'm just not reading it because I'm not particularly in the mood for that right now. Okay, I actually do have a slight problem because I don't think any of my super short books were gifted to me because I've bought them on Kindle. My camera battery is flashing at me, so I'm just going to pause while I decide, but... <sighs> I can't decide what to read so I'm going to make Twitter decide for me because I've chosen out three books and none of them I particularly want to read right now but these are the best options for the prompt for the readathon and obviously I am interested in them it's just that I can't decide because there's not one particular one that I'm like yes I need to read that right this second so we have Ivy Aberdeen's Letter to the World by Ashley Herring Blake which was gifted to me by Molly and is a contemporary middle grade. We also have the little book Fairy Tales which is a fairy tale retelling anthology which is published by a publisher who I don't know if they still exist but they did focus on diverse retellings and then we also have Knight's Daughter by Marion Zimmer Bradley which is a celestial fantasy and I don't know too much else about it but both this one and the fairy tale collection were gifted to me by Michelle from Books Michelle. So I am going to make a Twitter poll and see which one comes out top. I don't know how long I'm going to set it for so I will update you when I have my results but I am literally just going to write in like what I've just said to you guys like celestial fantasy or contemporary middle grade rather than the actual book titles because I think that will come out with more interesting responses so I'll come back to you when I have my results. <laughs> so I am now ready for bed and the poll is complete. I'm going to be reading Ivy Aberdeen, which I am kind of grateful for. This is not my usual sort of read, but I have had a very sci-fi heavy readathon and I just want something that's a little bit lighter, which this one definitely will be. So I'm going to go into bed, put everything on charge, my camera battery, my phone, my Kindle, everything, see how much of this I can read before I get too sleepy and then recharge myself. <laughs> 
It's now Sunday, I can't be bothered to do my hair properly so this is what we're dealing with. <laughs> I've fallen behind on my roll drops because we're now on the final roll drop. I only got 50 pages into Ivy Aberdeen last night so um, I'm slightly panicking that I will not be able to complete the readathon as I wanted to because I did want one short book for every roll drop and then also to finish The Long Way to Small Angry Planet. I don't think that's going to work because I'm now going to be reading three books at the same time. But we do now have another roll drop so I'm going to go and see what it is. 2019 board roll number four. Six. A young adult fantasy. Oh, okay, okay. A contemporary or a romance? Ooh, 20, 20. Ivy Aberdeen could fit for a contemporary if I wanted to double up, but then there is also a young adult fantasy. I don't know what to do. I really want to get another really short novella in, so I might see if I have any that would suit YA fantasy. I don't know what to do. Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Shona Maguire. Is what I'm going to go for. The audiobook is on script. It's only five hours long but it will be a little bit shorter because I will listen to it a little bit quicker. And I think I'm actually going to start listening to that now while I do some general bits and bobs and switch between that and Ivy Aberdeen throughout the day. See if I can get both of those finished and then if I do any spare time will go towards The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet which I don't think I'm going to finish today which is a shame but oh well. <laughs> Let's do this! remember the last time I updated. I finished Ivy Aberdeen, rated that three stars. It was cute and I just feel like I don't have too much to say on it because it was nice and it was had good messages behind it like this followed a girl who likes other girls and so she was trying to come to terms with that and people finding out and things like that. So it was really nice to read that and it did a really good job. There was a lot of themes of displacement and what it means to feel like you're the odd one out in your family and it was really quite I don't feel like emotional is the right word, like it is emotional but I didn't get emotional if that makes sense. But I don't have too much more to say about it and I'm not entirely sure why. I feel like I need to sit on it for a little bit and think about it because at the minute all I can really think is that it's just not my sort of thing. I then did a kind of finale live show with Becca and Deja. Deja is one of the purest souls on booktube, oh my goodness, she's just a sweetheart. And she's been doing lives all the way through today which has just been incredible. So I'm going to link her channel down below because I really want everybody to check her out, so please do. And then of course Becca, who I'm sure you all know by now if you're here. And I managed to read a few more pages of The Long Way to Small Angry Planet. So I'm now halfway through that. We do have more things happening in the plot, so we just get into a bit more action, a bit more liveliness to the story. I feel like I'm really slow in my words. It's very late here, I need to go to sleep. <laughs> I don't know what my final page count ended up being but I will put it on the screen but I'm really happy with how this went because I managed to blast through like four and a half books. I do however want a break from reading which isn't good because I do still have quite a lot of my TBR for July <laughs> which just hasn't been touched and it's all quite dense fantasy so this is gonna go well um but right now I'm not going to think about that because I'm going to go and take my makeup off, I'm going to get ready for bed and I'm going to sleep. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did then remember to leave a like or a comment to let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already then please consider doing so. Down in the description box you'll find information to all the books I've mentioned, all of my social media and all the bookish stuff as well, so be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye!